We are thrilled today, I am particularly thrilled, to have Susan Isaacs with us here at 100 Huntley. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. It's good to be here. How are you? Um, I'm good. I, I'm I didn't good. mean that literally. You don't have to answer every question. Okay. I'm a little dry mouth, but you, I think um, it's just being in your presence. Well, I have to tell you, or I have to tell the audience, basically, that you're, you're so versatile. So it, it is very tough to describe you. Um, I've known you for years. You're hilarious. We'll get to that in just a minute. But what are the main ways that people would know you? I mean, I remember when I met you, I said, mm -hmm. I know her from someplace. Mm -hmm. That was probably from Seinfeld. Yeah, well, um, I, I started working as an actor right out of college, and you'd remember me from Seinfeld. Um, I was also John Candy's wife. John Candy's wife. In Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. The reason I'm so excited to have you here is, is not just because you're mm -hmm. hilariously funny, but because you wrote a book that I have been raving about since it came out. Look, I think we may have a copy in studio. Hold on. Yeah, here it is. It's called Angry Conversations with God. I've been telling all my friends everywhere I go, I want my friends to read a great book. So, but this book, describe what it is, because this is yes. not easy. Okay, it's called Angry Conversations with God. A snarky but authentic spiritual memoir. Why are they angry conversations? Well, I had a, I was successful pursuing what I felt was my calling, you know, writing and performing in comedy and television and film. And I got to a place in my life where everything bad happened at once. Now, mind you, these are middle class white girls problems, but I was a middle class white girl, so I was dealing with that. Um, in a short order, my father died, my mother had a stroke, um, my acting career went completely south. Um, while all my friends got their big breaks, like friends with you know national television commercials, landed big TV show deals. My four best friends got married that summer. Meanwhile, the guy I was dating for three years, we just broke up. It all happened at once. And then um, I had come back from Los Angeles, back to New York. I had been helping my mother, who had had a stroke. And a friend of mine said, I know things are tough. One of my friends from church who was trying to lay on the church, you know, I just want right. to, you know, come and be Jesus to right. you, right. doing one of those things. And <clears throat> I'm like, okay, fine. And she took me for a walk in Central Park. And just as I was starting to feel like, you know, the sun is still shining and kids are still playing and life is still going on and I'm going to go you on. Finally got to that moment. Finally got to that moment. Like, okay, I have a future. Right. And who would walk by, un, did not see me, but my newly ex-boyfriend with his new girlfriend in a city that I didn't even live in anymore. And I thought, that was not random. That was, a, that was just God just going boom. Right. My friend said, well, praise the Lord. God is just showing you that Jack's moved on. I mean, those words like... Came so wait, out this, of her mouth. I, like I'm like, could right. you please pull them back in? That is bizarre. I mean, I just have to say that is amazing. I forgot that that's in the book. You tell that story. Amazing but that, that is truly not the word. That's that's I that would is, say that is incredible and bizarre. It's but bizarre. to play the role of the churchy Pollyanna, let me fix everything. I can say that if that hadn't happened, you wouldn't have written this amazing yeah. book. And it which, almost would have been worth it. Right. Exactly. Um, no, but what happened was is that started this thing in me where I thought. God is cruel, yeah. all these things that I thought that he was orchestrating my yeah. life for good yeah. and everything, it was like whack-a-mole, he just yeah. hit down all the moles and they never came well, back no, we, jo we joke around, but this, I know, this is so serious. I, I knew you during this time. Yes, and you did. This was, this was dark, this was dark, painful. Very, very dark, Yeah. very, very dark. Yeah. I stopped eating, I just, um, you know, I starved down to a size one and I, I don't know, I didn't even wanna live to enjoy the clothes. It was that bad, you know? But this is what happened. That's it's, bad. It was very bad. Yeah. It started this process where, aside from professional, personal, family things falling apart, yeah. my faith started to fall apart because I started to wonder if I ever heard God. And I went in to see a therapist, and I thought the fundamental relationship in my life, because I was single, was my relationship with God. And this therapist made me vocalize what my God sounded like. And let me tell you, that guy was a jerk. <laughs> he was like, really? I've got to sit here and talk to you and your problem. Yeah, he of course he spoke with the British That's accent. That's actually the Zoroastrian God. There's so many people who suffer from this issue. In other words, they're yeah. angry at some God who's not actually God. But they don't some realize it. Made up. Yeah. When I read the book, I kept thinking that 
what 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 amazed me was the authenticity, Thank right? You. It's not a religious book. It's a book for every everybody's kind of going through some Everyone of has some connection to God or the divine and whether we realize it or not. Yeah. And one of the most important things that I learned was that I had to love God for who he was and not what I could get out of him. And I had to come to terms with life on life's terms right. because I had really was telling God how he should run things. And um you guys hate that. Yeah, right. I did find that out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's the worst thing when someone in church goes, you know, it's just meant to be. I mean, right. tell that to someone who just lost a, a right. child to cancer. The Holocaust is just meant to be. It's, it's fine. It's yeah. all fine. God it's needs not. people. Yeah. No, when people say that, that yeah. I guess, again, this is why I love your book so much, because it, it, it basically blows through that nonsense. And that yeah. nonsense is so offensive. I mean, I it imagine is. whoever's watching this program, whoever reads your book, it resonates because they say, I have lived that. I have, I have, heard, I have gone through tough stuff and I've had some religious person give me this band-aid, which is just so shallow. Right. Your whole book is about not doing that. And, and the idea that you ultimately do come to terms with the, the God is totally different than I thought he was. Yeah. And that you do find a husband. Yeah. Are you guys still together? As of this morning, You're yes. Still, I'm yeah. so glad. Thank you for being with us. Come back soon. I will.